Biggest mistakes investing in bonds. What are the biggest mistakes investing in bonds? This question will be answered by Mr. Helge Müller. He is portfolio manager with Genève Invest, a Swiss asset management company based in Geneva. He is really one of the best bond expert I know and he it's a great pleasure for me to have Helge Miller he, uh, today, here today as our guest. Stay with us. Caputo and Partners, SwissBankingLawyers.com. We fight for your money. My name is Enzo Caputo. I am the founder of the boutique law firm Caputo and Partners and the owner of the blog SwissBankingLawyers.com. This is the place where international successful business people find tips and solutions to better protect their assets with Swiss banks, to pay less tax and to make more money in general. Stay with us. We fight for your money. It's a great pleasure, Helge, to have you here today with us. So what are the most common mistakes when investing in bonds? What can, do, can go wrong when investing in bonds? When can you lose your money and which kind of mistakes you should absolutely avoid? Yes, that way there are three key mistakes that we over and over see again. Yeah. And not only by private investors, particularly also by institutional investors. Uh -huh. So um, private yeah. banking companies. One point is overconfidence yeah. on certain bond positions and not diversify enough. Yeah. So we have seen portfolios of very big name banks in Europe yeah. Yeah. Um, where they only bought the client three bonds into the portfolio. Wow. Or a good example that even became so public. So no diversification at all, huh? Well, to give you an uh, example that became even famous um, is a German bank that got, uh, was saved in 2008 by the um, German government. Yeah. Um, and then they um, needed to invest the money very safe. And there was, by definition, every European country is safe. Yeah. Um, and as a result, they invested the full amount in Greece government bonds because wow. they had the highest yields. In Greece government bonds so because of the highest yields. Well, looking from the perspective of today, it sounds ridiculous, but in that time it was defined every European government is safe by definition yeah. of the European Central Bank. Wow. So this is one uh, central mistake. But so common sense is the best advisor, I think. Common sense. Well, common sense meaning diversification as, yeah. as one point and yeah. not being overconfident. Um, then a second point, of course, is not chasing too high yields yeah. um, and then getting too excited because often if the yields are too high, then you have the danger that um, where the company could default. Of course, then there may be issues that you have overseen. But at the same time, a second mistake in the same area is if you are too conservative, yeah. you leave money on the table. So if you just uh -huh. buy government bonds or AAA companies because you want to have the safest investments, well, there's nothing wrong with companies below that. They're even very safe and give very nice. So gifts. you have to take a certain risk, but you have to diversify. So even if you take a risk and you buy, I don't know, 50 companies or even more, if a company goes bust, you just lose 2% or 1%. So that's not, that's not a catastrophe. Correct? Uh, absolutely. And, and another point, of course, is um, look at the currency. So um, many, we, we had conversations also with um, many in investors that suddenly believe um, there are very good yields to get in currencies of, of Asian countries like Turkey or... Um, Turkey or, is very dangerous with this inflation and you cannot invest in Turkish currency. It's, it's well, crazy. Now it became obvious. Yeah. But a few years, years ago... Ah, it wasn't um, obvious. Ah, okay, I spoke, okay. to, for instance, to a number of Turkish investors that said, oh, yeah. this is very boring to get uh, those yields in Europe. I rather look on Turkish Lira, I get like three times more. But of course, in the end, they had nice yields, but lost money because the lost currency money like went crazy. so much. Yeah, so course. this is something, look on the currency. Um, on our, in our view, it is better to invest in safe currencies. Um, so meaning of AAA countries, um, this brings you on the safe side. And, and in particular, invest in the currency in which you calculate your profits. Um, if you want more risk, there are better ways to... I know that you are a very good bond investor. What kinds of bonds 
are you investing? So how is the rating of the bonds you are investing? So you can go until which risk you can afford, which kind or what is the maximum risk you can go in, in bonds? Um, well, actually, we don't like look at the ratings at all. Yeah. So we totally, we even like bonds that don't have any rating at all. Aha, uh -huh, I see. So, so uh, even so invest in bonds without rating, so you look into the company in this case. That's it. So basically we speak with the management, we follow the company, follow yeah. the quarterly results, we look what is going on. And what we are looking for in those companies are points that give us security. For instance, if you have a company that has a quite high debt level, but they have a big cash um, component. We see that currently, for instance, for energy company, yes. the oil sector, many oil companies were very scared when the oil price was even falling at zero, yeah. at least on, in the area of the derivatives in 2020. And then they were saving money. Then suddenly oil price came up, they collected a lot of money. A number of companies you see at the moment, they are net cash positive, as we call it, and mm -hmm. you still get double digit returns. Wow, unbelievable. So, it's so, unbelievable. So this is basically, but, but of course, don't buy that blind. You need to, read, need to look into yeah. um, what is going on. But if you do that, you're quite well rewarded. Excellent, excellent. So if an investor wants to come to you and be a client of you, what is the minimum investment? 250,000 or how much is it? From which amount of money somebody can start investing with you and achieve uh, good diversification because diversification is key to avoid risks. Yes, well, um, I mean, we, we start already with an investment amount of 100,000 euros. Yeah. But with this amount, it is more difficult to diversify a portfolio accordingly. Mm. Yeah. So therefore, um, basically, in order to invest in individual bonds to 100%, you should have at least two, three hundred thousand. At um, least two, three hundred thousand. Because if it's more, the better. So if you have five hundred thousand to invest, it's perfect. But you can already start with two, three hundred thousand, which is quite exceptional. I think you cannot do that with stocks, but with bonds, you can do that because uh, Helge uh, is doing that for uh, for our clients. Very interesting. <laughs> what are the dangers of chasing high yields, and what are the traps? Well, the key point is you need to do your homework. So there are very nice deals sometimes out there, but if you just close your eyes and you jump on those bonds that offer very high yields, you might have overseen something. So if you jump on bonds with high yields, you want to understand why is the yield so high? What is the fear of the market? And then you need to evaluate the risk. So just buying bonds with high yield um, can be very dangerous because then you are very much into um, high default risk, obviously. Um, at the same time, interesting enough, um, normally human nature is that people are always more afraid and when what really happens thereafter is often not that dangerous. So basically, if you diversify well, you could even blindly invest in bonds that have dropped 30% and you would make a nice return, you would have a higher default rate, but still the overall yield would be nice. Of course, you can improve that dramatically when you do your homework and you really go into detail, you look what is going on, you look to the quarterly reports of the company and you understand what is going on because then you avoid many of those pitfalls. Excellent. You told me before that you are also considering bonds without the rating. So you are looking really into the company and not into the ratings of companies or ratings of third parties. You are really considering the company itself. Absolutely. So basically, um, it's even going f more than that. What, what we do is um, we believe that we identified a number of systematic mistakes that rating agencies do repeatedly do uh -huh. and, Very and you can play that. I, I, give, you, I give you one example. Um, um, rating agencies, for instance, they give a rating to a company for a senior risk and a lower rating for a junior risk, for junior bond. Uh -huh. so, um, and those junior bonds have a lower rating. What, and is, a junior bond. Bond? what is a so junior bond? So basically, if a company defaults, uh, not every investor, um, bond investor gets the same amount. There is a um, queue. Uh -huh. um, it's like a bus stop in London. Uh -huh. So, everywhere. so the, the one with the highest seniority um, gets the best recovery yeah. and then it goes to the, to the next. So um, if you have bonds, sometimes you have bonds with the same company that have different ratings yeah. because you yeah. are less secured. Yeah. This makes sense until this point. However, 
sometimes and often these bonds with a higher security have also a shorter maturity, uh -huh. shorter duration. Then often the company pays this bond back first and issues a new safer bond with six, seven years maturity. Uh -huh. The junior bond then has maybe only two years of maturity and has a lower rating, but because the situation is so stable in that moment, the risk level is much lower, although the rating is much higher. So this is one of those mistakes. There are a number of ones, like in financial uh, crisis, the Allied Irish Bank in 2008, they gave an A rating, which uh -huh. was the same rating like Siemens. Uh -huh. And everyone in the market knew this cannot be the same. They didn't pay one coupon, defaulted immediately, uh -huh. and they had the same rating like Siemens. Mm. So just common sense approach. You don't even need to be a financial expert to know that the Irish bank and the financial crisis 2008 was much riskier um, than Siemens. Very so interesting, very interesting. So you certainly have a corporate bonds list. How big is your list on corporate bonds? So how many corporate bonds do you have on your list? And how many bonds are you considering for your investors? Can you tell us a little bit of the secrets, the insider company secrets of the company? So how big is your list um, on corporate bonds? Absolutely. So um, basically we, we look to thousands of bonds, but yeah. um, normally it starts, um, we take out those bonds with the lowest yield. So yields without 3% normally doesn't interest us. Uh -huh. um, we also often take out the very high risk. So we want to stay in the middle range yeah. um, because there you have the best risk reward profiles when you then go and tailor select the bonds. So, and, and then it is also not only important to select them prior, but to monitor the yield levels. You because have to monitor, yes, yes it's because, a, changing, uh, because, it's a changing market. Because yeah. what sometimes happens is a company issues very good results, yeah. then the bond goes up in price because the risk goes down, yeah. but then the yield goes down. Yeah. And um, often you can sell a bond prior to maturity um, at, um, at a premium of 105, sometimes 110, uh, one, 110, yeah. so, and you collect an additional Benefit. Um, an yeah. additional yield level by that, yeah. and then you can buy even this, the bond from the same company at par. Uh -huh. So this is so basically bonds are a bit like good wine; uh -huh. they I get see. more precious over time. Uh -huh. um, and in that time, you can constantly collect price levels when you sell them two years prior. If the price has, of course, moved okay, up okay. and the risk has moved down, okay. but it's often the case. Okay. So you told us that you have a list with thousands of bonds, but how many bonds are you really? are invested. So how many bonds of your lists are invested in your portfolios? About 200. About 200 bonds. So you see, in this example, you see how important diversification is. Diversification is very important. You, you need a bunch of companies in order to diversify the risk and to keep the risk low, low to 2%. So if one company goes bust, you lose when you have a diversification with 50 companies, just 2%. Correct? Yeah, you lose 2%. That, that, that's, well. a, that's the key point. You're on the safe side. Excellent. And then you can move up. If you do that, you can move up in buying bonds with higher yields. If you don't do that, you need to stay with lower yields to mitigate the risk. Uh -huh. This I is see. the key point. Very interesting. Very interesting. How important are fees and expenses in the bond market? Well, this is a clear answer. Very, very, very important. Very important. To, to give you an example, um, we have seen bond funds that invest in government bonds yeah. with a fee structure of above 1%. Well, this was, and those bond funds performed very nice when the interest rates were coming down and therefore the prices of the bonds moved up. But when you were looking what was in the portfolio, was the overall yield level of those um, government bonds um, below 0.5% with 1.5% fee. So it was 100% guaranteed that because it is a very clear example, it's not like that a certain stock can even go up more and more. Bonds have a defined level of yield. So it was defined that you would lose money by 100% yeah. security. So, so therefore it is very important to look to the um, to look to the expense level yeah. and, um, and therefore um, in particular when you want to invest in government bonds uh -huh. um, because then the yield level is very low. So this is a very key point um, that you need to have under control. The other point is also to avoid indirect investments in bonds. 
Always but, invest direct to invest directly in bonds. Well, because then it is clean. Yeah. You know, it, it's basically you, you buy the sushi and not um, yeah. a, a mixture where you don't know what is in there, but yeah. you have the yeah. clean um, product, you know what Direct you're getting, investment. So you should buy directly the corporate bond directly. So you avoid uh, useless expenses or even intransparent expenses because usually structured products have a lot of hidden expenses, hidden fees. You, uh, such products are not transparent. So that's why he as a professional, all professionals I know, they tell us always do direct investments. If you invest in bonds, buy directly the corporate bonds or buy directly the shares, don't buy investment funds or indirect investments. Absolutely. For, for instance, um, funds have not only the running fee structure, no. um, performance fee structure, an entry fee structure, but for instance, they can also charge marketing costs to, um, to the fund. So suddenly they make marketing, they make advertisement, um, and you come because of this advertisement. What you didn't understand is that it is not paid by the bank is not paid um, by anyone, but by yourself. By the investor, yeah. the investor they has to pay simply yeah. to the fund. So there are many additional fee structures that are, even in the times of today, it has gone much, and untransparent costs have gone much down, but still it is something to watch. Therefore, our recommendation buy into the individual bonds. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Helge. Information just like this you cannot find in bibliotheques, not in libraries and not in the internet. If you like more information just like this, please click the subscribe button and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, don't forget to ring the bell. By doing so, you will never miss our new videos. If you want, if you have a question you want to post directly to me, please use this follow-up number. This, uh, this phone number is 0041442424404. Or if you have a question you want to post directly to Helge Müller, in the description of the video there will be his direct contacts, his email and his phone number. If you have questions to him, you can call him uh, directly. Thank you for being with us. Be rich and stay rich. I wish you a beautiful day.